Hi everybody. I want to talk about difficulties. I'm not talking just having to pay the bills or anything like that. I'm talking about difficulties in life. Someone asked recently in a part of a forum I'm part of for people who have cerebral palsy if you could be born without your cerebral palsy or have it cured would you and not very many people said what I said and I find it hard to believe but I said no and the reason I said that I don't think people think about it every experience you go through from the time you're born to the time we die shapes who you are so when you say i wish i didn't have mental illness or i wish i didn't have one leg shorter than the other or i wish i didn't have red hair uh, or glasses then you're saying you don't in my view then you're saying you don't like who you are everything you go through everything you are is shaped by every experience you have every day i think honestly it is easier to be born disabled and i've said this my whole life it is easier to be born disabled than to become disabled but something my mom has said her whole life and my whole life is everybody has a disability some people's disabilities are just more visible than others i think we need to learn to accept not only our faults failings and what we consider disabilities in ourselves but in each other nobody has it easy in this life nobody and we're all the same race and if you actually look at it everybody's story can teach someone else a lesson and if we learn from each other and support each other there's no place we can't go i think it's how you define disability so a lot of people say, well, that's you can't do something someone else can. It's lack of ability. That's not it for me. I can do everything you can do. I just have to do it a different way. You drive a car? I drive. I have my little electric scooter. I consider that my car. My way is just a little different. It doesn't mean I have anything less than you and if you're watching this and your child's been born with a disability like cerebral palsy or spina bifida or what else blindness doesn't mean they're they lack anything it just means their world is going to function a little differently if they're autistic adhd add those are labels and I think we, we, we stick labels on each other and then we expect someone to stay in that little box. When I was a teenager, there was a book at my local library and my church library, let me qualify that. And I can't remember the author. So if you're out there and yeah, I'm sorry, but it was pack up your troubles in a great big box sit on the lid and laugh that was the name of the book and just the name of the book got me thinking what do people consider their troubles and why can't we pick them up in a box and sit on their lid and laugh about it because disability mental illness cerebral palsy blindness Autism, they're labels. You label something to identify it. If anybody you know has ever canned, you know that they label the jars so they know what's in them. Just look at the grocery store. Everything's labeled. Why do we do that to each other? 
and then we don't expect that they can go past that label or that box that we have created for them. My mom was telling me ever since I was young, don't label yourself. That's what she meant. Don't label yourself. Don't stick an I can't in front of any sentence. Choice is a powerful thing. Instead, stick an I choose. I chose not to drive a car. And literally, I did. Mom and I sat down when I was 15, and I told her, I said, Mom, I don't want to see a little kid going chasing after their puppy or their ball in the street, and I can't react quick enough because I didn't see it and be responsible for a life. I don't want to drive. It was nobody's decision but my own. And isn't that what life is, is a series of decisions? Some people get mad at their kids because they make a mistake. Don't get mad. Look at that kid and say, okay, you made a mistake. What did you learn from it? Because, honey, you may be an adult, but you ain't perfect either. And mistakes, be they big ones or little ones, are things to be learned from. You know, maybe the kid that was a bully when they were little can look back on that and go, that was a mistake. Don't do what I did. Don't be who I was. Because nobody is fixed in a box. We can all change. Some for the better, some for worse. But what anybody else says about you, thinks about you. A friend of mine, Connie Ann, she likes to say, what you think of me doesn't matter. Or something similar to that, Connie, if you're seeing this, I'm sorry I butchered your saying, dear. Um, but why should what you think of me matter? It's what I think of me and what my God thinks of me, if you're religious or have faith. There are differences in my mind, but that's a whole other topic. If someone says something to you that hurts your feelings, you're allowing that hurt to come into your heart. Instead, and it's not easy, try to think, I'm not going to let them bother me. There's a saying, water, like water off a duck's back. Duck's feathers, I don't know much about ducks, but I know they have oil on them so that when it rains, it goes literally down their feathers. We have to learn, people are not going to always be nice. It's not the nature of us. We're good, we have good in us and bad in us, light and dark, and they balance each other. I can be mean, spiteful, and ornery too. It's what we do with it. It's how we choose to present ourselves that matters. You know, my mom doesn't like that I don't wear my dentures most of the time because they hurt still. I don't care. She's not the one that's in pain when she wears them. My decision. Not hers. You know, it all comes down to, can you live with your decision? No one else has to live with it than you. And can you live with the limits that you put on yourself? That's where I was going. If you label yourself, allow yourself to be labeled, allow your child to be labeled. Can they live or can you live with that label? and be happy or would you rather be happy being a totally original individual because you are I don't care if you have an identical triplet your each thoughts feelings emotions your individuals even if the packaging looks the similar 
or even the same. Because even identical twins have differences. We all have differences. And if we all have differences and we're none the same, why do we try to make each other be? Why do we try to lump each other? Oh, she's autistic. She can't she can't be autistic. She's too smart. Why do I want to be a label? I have trouble understanding social situations and stuff like that. That's fine. I accept that. And if you want to call it autism, that's fine too. I don't care. I call it being me. I'm me and I am more than okay. I am beautiful. I am perfect. You know, back in the day, they used to have kids write lines when they got, did something wrong. How about having your kid or even yourself grab a notebook, write every positive thing about you that you can think of that's ever been said. Nothing negative. Positive only. And then if you write a negative list, which one's going to be longer? Why is that? Why do we accept that? Why is it easier to accept negatives? Why is having autism or cerebral palsy a bad thing? It's not. It's a condition, but it doesn't have me. It doesn't own me. It doesn't define me. I define me. And if God created me, God doesn't make mistakes. Human beings make mistakes. But make a mistake and learn from it. Kids, sit down and listen to your parents talk about their lives. Learn from their mistakes or your grandparents. Don't get mad at each other. Don't label each other. Oh, they've got a disability. They've got a mental illness. They have to fit in this box. They're going to be like this then. I can't employ a disabled person. Have you tried? That disabled person might become the best employee you've ever had. But you're not going to know if you put them in a box. I don't know, it just bothered me, and it always has. Even my own grandpa, and I love him to death. He's gone now. But he thought that if I prayed hard enough, if I really wanted to be cured, I would be, that God would fix me. And I never, when I, until I was a teenager, I didn't say anything against it. And I regret how I said this, so learn from me, people. But I snapped at him when I was a teenager. And I said, Grandpa, why do you think I'm broken? Why do you think I need fixing? Why can't you accept me for me? And he said, well, I do accept you. I just want you to have better. In his world, having better meant being better physically. I look back on that and the way I said it the way I approached it I shouldn't have lost my temper everybody's entitled to their own opinion but sometimes people's opinions suck black and white that's how it is don't let it affect you unless you choose to let it affect you grab that notebook and start writing every day i am dot 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 and dot 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 must be a positive you want to own a business someday i am a successful business owner start thinking like you are one and you will be I am beautiful inside and out. I am loving. I am kind. I am strong. And if you start writing more of the positive, 
Later, when you look back at that negative list and that very first positive list, if you do it again in, say, six months, which list do you think is going to be longer then? Which list is going to mean more if you start thinking of yourself better? No one can think best of you and elevate you and help you create the world you want to live in unless you start with yourself. I want to be happy. I want to have peace. I want to help others. So I make YouTube videos. And whether I reach one person or one million doesn't matter. It makes me happy to help you. And if I reach one person, even if I didn't know you, my life is my goal. Okay, next goal. Let's go on to the next goal. People say that little kids shouldn't have to deal with problems like surgeries. But I learned a lot from those surgeries. And I learned that if I want something bad enough, all I got to do is reach for it. I may not get it in the same way that it's in my head. But if I want something and I work for it, I'll get it. You can too. You just have to think better of yourself first. I've said this before in other videos, but until you can look in that mirror and say, I love me, I may not be perfect. I would love to have a full mouthful of beautiful teeth that didn't hurt, you know, the natural, normal teeth, my teeth. I don't have that and that's okay. I can still look in the mirror and go, I may not be that 130 pounds that I want to be. I may not be someone with a mouthful of teeth and a single chin and no loose skin, and but I still love me. I can also look at it like I've got loose skin. I lost weight. I was successful. That's my badge of honor. you choose is it the I'm ugly because I have blue skin or is it dang I look much better now and I've got a trophy to prove it you don't have to show anybody your lists when you're no one's around talking to yourself because you know you do it you may not do it aloud but you do do it inside your head Start thinking to yourself, even if you don't believe it at first. I am smart. I am kind. I am honest. I am loyal. It's harder to think of yourself in the positive than it is in the negative. Do it. Give it a week. Seven days. Try it. No one has to see the notebook but you. And if you live alone, put sticky notes on your bathroom mirror. I am strong. I am beautiful. I am funny. I am good with time changes, even if, like for me right now, that's a lie. But I'll tell myself that lie and I'll start to believe it. Have you ever known somebody that lied about something for so long they couldn't tell the lie from the truth anymore? I'll be honest, I've done that in my life. To the point where I look back now and I can't tell what was a lie and what was the truth, what really happened and what I thought happened. It's something I live with, but I don't let it live with me. Did you catch that? I live with it. It does not live with me. It does not live and reside in me. The past is labeled 
the past for a reason. Yesterday is gone. There is no time machine. We are not H.G. Wells. Good book. Read it. The Time Machine, H.G. Wells. We cannot go back to yesterday. Don't live there. We live here in the today. We can't go to the future. There's no enterprise that's going to sling us around the sun and we're going to go to the future or go to the past. Take your life, take your thoughts, take your abilities and yourself and your being moment by moment and do that moment. You know, I've, I've listed decisions that I've made in my life, in my notebook, and the consequences that I could remember. And I try to look back on that and read it again and think, what can I learn from that mistake? What can I learn from that misstep? I like that better than mistake. Because if you're walking along and you stumble, how do you fix it? You write yourself or you grab something to catch your balance and you keep going, right? Why don't we do that in life? Why do we make missteps mean so much when they should just be a learning experience and the stair step of life? Now, I know I got off the topic, but you know me in these videos. They tend to ramble on because I ramble. I like that about me. I go through. My friend Gail calls them rabbit trails. Well, this little bunny hops down them. My thoughts go here and there. But, you know, if we learn from each other and our missteps, then that's not a wasted misstep, is it? The only question is, the dumb question is one you don't ask, right? Well, the only wasted experience is one you don't learn from. So don't make your life a wasted experience. Share your life. Share it with others that are going through what you've been through. Reach back behind you and say, hey, I've been there, let me show you what I did and maybe that can help you through or you can learn something from it and give me your hand and I'll help you through. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're here for is to learn and to help each other. And you can't do that if you're living in yesterday or your head stuck in tomorrow. I had to learn that one. I've always been what's called a dreamer. What would life be like if I had millions of dollars? But I never did anything about it. What would life be like if I went over and joined that group of people and became their friend and was popular? What if I was one of the in crowd, the cool kids, the cheerleaders? But I never walked over and introduced myself. Looking back, I regret that I let the label that was placed on me define me for so many years. I could have done so much more to this point. But that doesn't matter. What matters is that I look at those missteps and I use that knowledge for the next step. Don't call them mistakes. Let's call them missteps. Let's grab knowledge, write our balance, and keep going. And help others grab the knowledge, grab the experiences, write their steps, and keep going. And there isn't anywhere we can't go. Don't limit yourself to anything. Create your happy life. 
It may not look like mine. You know, I bet some of my neighbors wonder about me sometimes. I put on my headphones and they're kind of bulky. My Bluetooth big guys. And even though I live alone, sometimes I like the music really loud. So I'll turn it up and I'll put on a song that makes me happy or makes me want to dance. I really like Walk Like an Egyptian by the Bangles. I love music. And I'll put on something that I really like. You know, Lady Gaga or Beyonce or whatever, you know, Cindy Lauper, the monkeys. I love music. I haven't met music I have that I don't like. You know, and I uh, Mannheim Steamroller, Trans Siberian Orchestra, love it all. I'll put on something or I'll put on I Pandora Radio and I'll put it on shuffle stations and I'll just dance around the apartment, you know, so I don't disturb my neighbors. Plus I like the music. I like it when it surrounds me. And I don't feel like exercising that day, so I put on the music and I bop around the apartment looking like a fool, dancing with the mop. Makes me happy. And if it makes someone who looks in the door or the window, because I leave the front door open for Archer to peer out the door at people, laugh, well, that's great. Because they're only laughing at me if I choose to let them. Otherwise, we're both just having a good time. Don't let them. Don't let them in here. You're wasting space. If you let people's thoughts and feelings in here and in here, and you let your own take a back seat, you're wasting space. Don't waste space. Don't do it. I hope you all have a good weekend and a good next week. As I think it's Saturday. But have a good weekend, have a good week. And if you want to talk, I'll put my email in the comments. Or you can drop me a line on here. But don't be alone if you need help. And write those positives, even if you don't believe them. Even if you don't believe you're smart, or you don't believe you're funny, or you don't believe you're beautiful or handsome, write it down. And keep writing it, and you'll believe it. Give it a week, seven days. Find your own positive sentence about yourself. I am me and I am beautiful, strong, kind, and loving. And write it over and over and over again. And see if it helps. Don't let your any negative touch that paper except for that first list you make. And then make another list at the end. I don't know if seven days is long enough. That's just the number that popped into my head. Use your own number. You want to try it for a month? Go for it. You want to try it for two days? Go for it. You don't want to write? Record yourself. On your cell phone, your tablet, your computer, whatever. And talk. Nobody has to see it. You don't have to publish to YouTube. You don't want to write? Talk. You know, your kid doesn't know how to write yet, but you want them to learn to think positive? Record them. Or help them grab a pen. Hey, let's let's make a list of what's great about you. Because how many, even little kids, hear negative? They say little pictures have big ears. Well, that soaks in. And if you think about it, it's so much easier to be negative about yourself than it is to be positive. Those two lists are going to be very difficult. The negative list will come easy. But that positive list about yourself, that's going to be hard. It might not even be very long at first. But if you write it, even if you don't believe it, you will come to believe it. 
You are beautiful. You are smart. You are worth everything this world has to offer. And if no one else has told you that, I'm telling you. I believe in you. Have a good day.